Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration recently approved a new treatment, a nasal spray for hard-to-treat depression. The new drug, Spravato, esketamine is the generic, no, no, let's see. The new drug, trade name Spravato, also called esketamine, is given in conjunction with an antidepressant given by mouth. The nasal spray, which has to be administered by a medical professional in a medical setting, is prescribed for adults who have not had success with other antidepressant medications. And here to discuss is Mayo Clinic psychiatrist, Dr. Jennifer Vandevoort. Welcome to the program, Dr. Vandevoort. It's really nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you folks as well. Nice to have you here. Uh, uh, Dr. Vandevoort, would you consider this, do you think that this is a significant breakthrough in the treatment of depression? When we think about where antidepressants have been over the past several decades, we've had little success in developing medications with radically novel mechanisms of action. This works on the glutamatergic system, whereas the old school antidepressants have worked on the serotonergic system. Break it down. Glutaminergic. Yeah. What is the difference? I'm the lay person <laughs> here. What's the difference word. between those two? <clears throat> so there are different molecules in our brain, basically. Okay. And the thing about ketamine and S-ketamine is that it's a rapid acting antidepressant that also has anti-suicidal properties. There's nothing else that we have in our disposal that, that does that. So yes, it's a game changer for the field. What qualifies as hard to treat depression? Yeah, I found that sort of interesting because isn't all depression hard to treat? Well, for some patients, they respond to the first antidepressant they receive. Other patients take multiple trials of antidepressants. So when we think about hard to treat depression or treatment resistant depression, we have to cl clarify that that is people failing two antidepressant trials at adequate dosages and durations. And this is fast acting. That's one yes. of the big advantages. Yes. And fast acting studies have shown even within 40 minutes, 100 minutes, people are already feeling better. Within a day, again, people are feeling remission from their depressive symptoms. We don't have anything else like that on the market. How, how is it? How is that possible? I mean, how is it that a medication, that, a pill that you take, can't have the same effect as this nasal spray? It's a good question. There's active areas of study that are currently researching what is the mechanism of action for this drug that produces these antidepressant and anti-suicidal effects. Still, I think, questions in that regard. More to learn. What about side effects? Side effects, we look at sedation, dissociation. Sometimes patients will say, well, the, the walls seem wavy or colors seem brighter. Um, sometimes people will have nausea, uh, maybe some vomiting. So... It's rare, but it can happen. So patients need to know that up front. And the drug itself gets into your bloodstream and, and thus to your brain much uh, more quickly than something you would take by mouth. It's like nicotine. You know, that's why yes. it, people smoke. Part of it is that the nicotine gets into your system so quickly through your lungs. And I assume this drug the same way. Yes, that's correct. S-ketamine has been delivered intranasally. A lot of the studies that have been done to date have actually used ketamine intravenously. And so that's also going directly into your bloodstream in that case. But yes, it, it's faster than an oral. So is this drug uh, absorbed th in the uh, through the nose, the nasal passages, or does it actually go down into the lung when, when you... Th that's disperse. a good question. I don't know if we have the answer to that. Okay. But it is much more fast acting than anything you would take by mouth. Yes, that, that's correct. So why is it only available in a clinical setting? Why can't I have this like a, a asthma inhaler of some sort? So it is a scheduled three substance. And what that means is that it has some addiction potential. We wouldn't want to send somebody out with a, a bottle of S-ketamine because they could misuse it. And it has an abuse potential that we want to be very thoughtful of. So um, how often do you use this drug? How often would someone come into the physician's office to have it administered. So it's designed to kind of have an induction phase where people do it two times per week for roughly four weeks or so. And then they can do it once per week for another four weeks. Eventually you hope to maybe taper off of the medication, but I think the verdict is still out. I think there's more to be learned in what is the long-term side effects of this? What is the long-term efficacy? That's where the gaps in our knowledge exist to date. Well, it's pretty exciting, too, because the side effects of traditional medication, that, like a prescription that you would take, a pill that you would take, 
are, are, there's a lot of them and far flung in many of them. So this is exciting because if you can find a way to help people with their depression and not have all the side effects that come along with traditional prescript antidepressants, yeah. that's kind of a game changer. It is. It absolutely is. And again, we don't have anything that works this quickly for depression or suicidal ideation. Um, and, and that's a hard to treat condition as well. And so that's why this is getting a lot of attention, rightfully so. How long has this drug been been studied? It does have FDA approval. We uh, we obviously we said that, but how long uh, did it take to study this drug before the FDA determined that it was safe to use? That's a good question. Um, there is a pharmaceutical company that's been investigating it for at least a couple of years, to my knowledge. But a lot of this has come out of the studies using actual ketamine. So S ketamine is basically one molecule of ketamine. And so ketamine's been studied for a long time. It's been used in pediatrics and um, veterinary medicine. It's approved for procedural sedation and anesthesia. So that's been around for, for many, many years. Around 2006, the NIH started studying ketamine IV. And so as um, we've found more studies that show that ketamine's really effective, now pharmaceutical companies are putting their money to see, gosh, can S-ketamine be effective as well? And so it's been it's been several years. And you said this is for adults only at this point. Are they yeah. working on a version for teens and young adults? Uh, I don't know if they've actually have any trials currently going for teens or young adults. Um, ketamine does have, there's a published trial for adolescents with treatment-resistant depression using IV ketamine. I think m- mental health is finally starting to receive some of the attention, the importance, uh, attention to the importance of good mental health. Do you feel like there's a little bit of a shift happening, a tide turning that people are becoming a little more likely to ask for help? I think so. When we, I see a span of population. So I see kids and I see adults and the older generation that I see is more hesitant to ask for help. And it's a big deal for them to come into the office. The younger population is more likely to ask for help. And I think that is a good change, a shift that I'm seeing. Um, You said that this is for hard to treat depression. So uh, how many other drugs would you try before you said, okay, let's try esketamine? So for right now, in order to be considered for esketamine, you should really fail at least two. The patients that we have in our ketamine clinic have often failed anywhere from five to 10. And it just really depends on on the patient. The cost is not insignificant either. So I think sometimes that's a deterrent for patients to receive ketamine or esketamine. And you said cost, how much, how much does this drug cost? Do we know? So it appears that the company is marketing it at $590, um, up to 885, I believe. Is that for a week or a month? Uh, That's that's per treatment. Oh, really? For one? For one treatment. Spray. Right. And so you'd be doing two of those per week for several weeks, kind of depending on on the patient. And would insurance cover this in most instances? That is a good question. Um, I think that verdict is still out. That's why they get to, you have to have had a couple of failures through other medications. And what determines a failure of an antidepressant? Oftentimes you have to be at an adequate dose at an adequate duration. So sometimes it depends on the medication, but that adequate dose would be dependent on the medication. But oftentimes it's for eight weeks. All right, psychiatrist Dr. Jennifer Vandervoort, we've been talking about a new nasal spray available for the treatment of uh, depression, and it's a significant advance. As Tracy would say, it's a game changer. It is. It, it's, it's expensive, but fortunately, we've got something even better available for the treatment of depression. Absolutely. Dr. Vandervoort, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you.